The next one here is from Kathy. Uh, hey, Kathy. I uh, love your YouTube content. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I've been using Fusion 360 to do some designs, and I'm trying to do something different now. I want to print the Stanford Bunny. Next to go out and look what the Stanford Bunny was. Um, and I think that the Stanford Bunny was what the teapot was for rendering software. The Stanford Bunny, I believe, I, somebody correct me in the comment area below, um, was 3D printer manufacturers test uh, on um, on how good their printer services services was. I'm going to show you the Stanford Bunny in just a second. But uh, so Kathy got this uh, Stanford Bunny from um, from Thingiverse, Thingiverse, um, but feel like the ears are a little jagged. Next, she said, "Excuse me, sent me an image of it," and I agree, Kathy. That doesn't look great. Um, so the question from Kathy is, I don't know to use mesh mode, to use patch modes, to use the sculpt modes. How do I fix this? And that is actually kind, I think, kind of an interesting topic to have. So we're looking at this ear of the bunny and we're looking at it as being very, very jacket. Now, what I did was I couldn't help myself. I actually went out to Thingiverse, found the Stanford bunny downloaded as an STL. So let me just bring that in. Insert, insert mass. Here was the high resolution Stanford Bunny. Um, and I think it was Jamil had created it to give Jamil credit. And I'm gonna bring in the biggest one of them. Look at the size over here. I'm gonna bring in the biggest STL there was. So it's gonna take just a, a, a quick second. And here comes this, this bunny in here. Now, I wanna show, I wanna talk about a couple of different things here that hopefully is, is, is valuable to you, Kathy, and anybody else uh, watching. Um, so if we're looking at Kathy's image right here, um, this to me is clearly uh, an STL file. We see the triangular uh, shapes on this. Um, and many people know that I'm not a big fan of STLs. And when I say I don't have a big fan of STLs, this is where 3D printer people gets upset with me. That's okay. I'm, you know, um, don't get upset with me. The reason that I'm not a big fan of STL files is not, and I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. STL files is just a triangular mesh. We actually see that perfectly in Kathy's image. Uh, triangular, flat triangular shapes. In here, I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks. So, um, and then I get to your question, Kathy. Uh, but maybe, hopefully, all this is, um, is is useful. So, what happens with an STL file is that if I have this glass and I convert it into an STL file, then it's just gonna throw a triangular mesh all the way around the outside shape. So it's normally hollow. There's no thickness to it. It's just triangular. Um, triangular shapes. Now, depending on the software you're using, and this is where I'm, I'm going to start out by saying why I don't like it. Most of people who get try who get STL files are getting them from something else, and they have no control over how big these triangle shapes are. And these triangular shapes are defining the accuracy of your model. So again, if I take this glass and I throw a triangular shape over here. If I make a, so think about a carpet or a quilt out of triangular shapes wrapped around this here. If I only have 20, it's gonna be a lot more rocket than if I have 2000, right? If I have 20,000 small, small triangles, then it's gonna be a lot closer to the original shape and be, be more accurate. Um, so that's the problem with it is that most people, when they're getting something, they don't have control over how tight they make these triangles. Honestly, and I don't know this for sure, but honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe that the reason that 3D printers are using STL files is because in the beginning, when FDM printers like the Ultimaker I have, love the Ultimaker, it's great, but when they originally came out, 3D printers 25 years ago, 
they really didn't know how to make it really, really accurate. And that's why the, the Stanford bunny, for example, the one we have on the screen here, was kind of used as a as a model to um, to show how how accurate you could print something, right? Okay. So now I've said all of this. So that's my, my, my main reason for this is the accuracy of the model. The second point that comes to this is when you're using a mechanical CAD software like Fusion, like Inventor, like SolarWorks and all of these mechanical softwares, um, they have generally not, I, I remember 10, 12 years ago, you couldn't even use an STL file inside of a mechanical CAD software. You brought it in, you could just look at it, you couldn't do nothing with it. Fusion is actually the best mechanical CAD software I'm, a, I'm aware of, again the comments, mechanical CAD software I'm aware of to handle these mesh files. Because the problem is that I loaded in the biggest file of this and actually, Kathy, I would probably, if I was you, I would probably just go out and download this one because this ear looks a lot better than yours, <laughs> right? Um, but when you're zooming in, you will see that this is many, 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 many triangles. And CAD software, mechanical CAD software, has to solve everything. Every single point, every single face, every single thing. Um, so when you're adding a lot of triangles, it's gonna, the software is gonna bog down. So what, one point that is, that is important to understand is that we're looking at the head of this bunny, cute bunny. This actually is not round. Right, it's just build up the finer these triangular shapes are, the finer it's going to be. So, um, I'm gonna sh I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about this just because I want to make sure that we get this straight. So, mechanical CAD generally have not been able to handle um, a big amount of these. Um, so, first of all, I know this is a mess. We can look here, and we can see that this has a mess icon down here. Uh, mesh icon down here. Now Fusion actually has mesh tool built into it. Um, and this comes back to you, Kathy, with your ear. Um, if you wanna try to manipulate the mesh file directly, I would not use Fusion for that. I would use um, Autodesk's Mesh Mixer. You can actually go and download Mesh Mixer for free. And, and many of the mesh tools that are inside of Fusion are actually, I think, are coming directly from Mesh Mixer. You can turn those on. If you go to your name, Preferences, and you go to Preview, it's a preview option, you can turn on the Mesh Workspace. So you check that, and now you actually will have mesh tools in here. But you don't want to do this in the history line. I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to turn on the, I'm going to right-click on the top component, Turn on and say, do not capture uh, history in here. And, uh, and click on that. And, and now I'm in the free form mode. You will see I get these mesh tools available in here. You can do a lot of great things in here. We could actually chop the ear off. We could heal things. We can do different things. One of the things we can try to do is we can go to the body. This is a mesh file. We can right click and we can say, I want to turn actually right click, highlight the whole thing, right click, and hang on, let's get out of the, sorry, make sure you're not in the mess workspace. Get back to solid. You can right click on the body here and you can say mess to B rep. So turning the mess we have here into a, a solid. Um, if I click on that and say okay, it comes up here and tells me that this model have 270,021 facets. 270,021 triangles. Now all you STL lovers out there, that's a lot of freaking triangles, right? I had a quarter for every triangle. Fusion likes round about um, about the the fifty thousand mark. What is actually 
pretty substantial. So what we can do is we can go into the mess tool and we can go in here and you will see you have all these different tools. There's actually a reduce. So we can select this whole body and say facet count and then we can change this. Now, the higher you make it, the more round it's gonna be because of the triangular shape I just talked about. The smaller you make it, uh, the rougher it's going to be. I'm going to say this is a 49,000. I'm going to hit OK. Fusion, uh, Fusion is going to think for a second because they're actually taking this mesh body right now and it's literally making it down to bigger triangles. You can actually probably already start seeing that it is um, a little rougher here. Now, before I go any further, I want to show you that I actually, this model I brought in has holes in it. You see that? Has holes in it. Now, let's make another thing clear. Garbage in, garbage out. Good things in, good things out. What's well, actually going to happen with this model when I bring it in? Now, get out of the mess workspace, go into solid, right click. When I go here and say mess to B wrap, it's gonna say that it's not recommended, but it can actually do it. It's gonna take a little while too. You will see this is not gonna come in as a solid. This is actually gonna come in as a surface body. And the reason for that is again, that there's these holes in the model. So this is to, to, to understand that now all those facets just became surface bodies. Um, there's ways we could have gotten around this. Um, and now the whole model is going to work very slow because now it's not only keeping in charts of 40, 50,000 mesh bodies, it's also now have, you know, 50,000 surface bodies. That is going to slow uh, fusion down here. Now, if I, if I just go back into our mesh file, Turn the mess back on, turn the surface back on. What we could have done was maybe have done something like a plane cut in the surface area in here. And what that means was we could actually have cut this body with a, uh, with a plane in here. Somewhere where uh, above that, that, um, of that cut is so let's me spin this around 90 degrees um, and if I now do a uniform fill on the body then it will actually make this now a a solid now I missed the bottom here I could also try to patch it up I'm just being lazy now if I go in and take this and I now say turn this into a, um, a mass or into a solid, you will see that this is going to turn it into, uh, into a solid. So I hope this is kind of useful in the sense of working with these STL files. See, now it became actually a solid body uh, we now have, uh, have in here. So this should be super helpful for anybody who's working with STL files. Um, and, and now we got it in as a, as a solid. Of course, of course, if you just look at the 3D print this, then you would not have worried about um, turning this into, um, of course, into to a solid. Then you can send it directly to the printer. Now to fix the ear, to do that, um, just like in a previous video in here, that for me will become the form workspace in here. I would create a cylinder shape. And again, anything to do with form has to do with, uh, with how good you are at, uh, at working with, uh, let's make it like something like this, um, fall, fall, uh, form or sculpt has everything to do with, uh, with practice and becoming better. But uh, what I would do is I would create for your ear I would create a brand new ear, uh, Kathy, that I would play in here. I would place it wherever um, I kind of want it. Let's 
spin this around a little bit maybe make sure we get that shape wherever we want it that looks about right um, and if you're familiar with the sculpt environment you can now um, we can now start aligning things in different fashions with different edges uh, in here um, we can we can move things around um, move the handles around here maybe a little bit so they get somewhat around the edges of the ear and uh, and then we can start holding down alt and we can start adding as many sections as we want to uh, for this ear um, we can select double click on ads we can select the whole thing and uh, we could now start you know maybe scaling the ear out uh, we could select one edge here and maybe we start um, dragging the edge of the ear in here we can close it up the sculpt environment is definitely the environment to um to start working with with this whole uh with this whole ear here uh, again don't forget about the positioning tools where you can you can start moving arrows in the direction you kind of want like that um, and we can start pulling the ear out and, and work with with the ear there and then in the end when you're all done Maybe you hide the solid body sometimes so you can select certain areas. Redefine this. So again, watch um, watch some of my other other videos on this for sure to make sure that you get um, into the sculpt environment and learning how to to use this. But um, this is definitely a way to start. You know, if you gotta start creating something as delicate as as a as a bonus ear was that too long did it did that get too complicated i'm sorry if it did um just trying to add a little bit of more value to your fusion 360 experience you see we already passed an hour here i'm halfway done it's gonna be a long one today hope that is okay with you